Ladies and gentlemen, the New Orleans Saints officially report to training camp here in a couple weeks. Yes, it is officially that time of the year where we all become extremely delusional thinking that our team is going to be the best team in the league just because of everything seemingly going perfect in training camp. But nonetheless, it is an exciting time of the year because we finally get at least a taste of football back, even though it is only training camp. But with that being said, here are some of the things that I'm excited to watch out for when it comes to the Saints. 2024 training camp. The first thing I'm excited to look out for is the new offense. The Saints have had the same offense out on the field, you know, schematically for the better part of 17 years, right? Sean Payton ran his offense. He was a coach from 2006 to 2021. And then Pete Carmichael stayed two years after that. So like I said, the better part of 17 years, the Saints were running the same offense year after year after year. And that makes them extremely unique compared to the rest of the NFL. The rest of the NFL, the offensive coordinator turnover is actually insane. Pete Carmichael was by far the longest tenured OC and there wasn't even a close second. Even teams with long tenured head coaches like the Ravens with John Harbaugh or you know the Steelers with Mike Tomlin, those guys aren't offensive minded coaches so they aren't running their offense, which means they too have went through different offenses over the years. So the Saints go out and they hire Clint Kubiak this year to come in and install his offense. Obviously, his offense is the same one his dad ran, Gary Kubiak, and it's you know similar to the one that Kyle Shanahan runs, who Clint Kubiak worked for last season. Um, and you know, obviously, a handful of other teams run that offense as well. It seems to be what's taking the lead by storm right now. And to be honest with you, I'm excited to see it. I think that this offense plays into the strengths of Derek Carr. I think it's really heavily based on play action, which is something that Carr has done really well during his entire career. And it's something that the Saints basically didn't do at all last year. They ran the least play action um, based plays in the entire NFL, which is crazy when you think about it and even crazier when you look at the numbers and how good Derek Carr is on play action, play action concepts. So number one on my list, I'm excited to see a new offense. Number two on the list, I'm excited to watch the backup quarterback battle between Jake Hayner and Spencer Rattler. Now, Jake Hayner was drafted by the Saints last year, Spencer Rattler, of course, this year, and, you know, Jameis Winston is gone, right? Um, it's a huge part gone from the locker room. Everybody loved him, but he's moved on to the Cleveland Browns. You know, Deshaun Watson hasn't been the best since, you know, the whole, well, you know, and maybe Winston thinks he can pop in there and become the starter. But nonetheless, Jameis Winston has moved on, and that leads us to Hayner versus Rattler. Now, he has all the God-given arm talent in the world that you could ask for, but he still has some stuff to work on mechanic-wise, you know, marrying his feet with his arm and his eyes. But if he can do that, I mean, he can put it all together, and he can start games in the NFL. I mean, the talent that that guy has is, um, you know, second to none to be honest with you but jake hayner if you've been following me you know that i'm bang bang hayner gang i'm a big jake hayner fan i think he's another guy who can start games in the nfl i really do i know some people may think i'm crazy for saying that but i don't care um i watched he was one of my favorite quarterbacks coming out last year he was in my top five actually i watched every single game that, that dude played in college and he just did nothing but win and he's just a good talented quarterback that is undersized so i do expect jake hayner to probably come out on top in that quarterback battle just because like i said spencer rattler it's his rookie season you know this is jake hayner's year two but you know they are both learning a new offense so who knows but um, back in otas it did kind of seem like hayner was maybe getting the best of rattler a little bit although he was also getting to work with the number twos more often than spencer rattler but nonetheless, I'm excited to watch the backup quarterback battle because who knows, some of these guys may end up having to come in and play for Derek Carr because last year we've seen multiple times where Jake, or excuse me, where Jameis Winston had to come in for an injured Derek Carr. Next thing I'm excited to watch is the offensive line. The offensive line is going to look really different this year. Obviously, Ryan Ramchek, it doesn't look like he's ever going to play football again, which really, really sucks um, to say the least. All pro career, but you know, he's got some, some injury problems some health problems hopefully he can come back but it doesn't look like that's going to happen so it looks like Talise Fuaga of course who the Saints drafted in the first round this year is going to be at left tackle at least that's where he was working the most at OTAs and they're going to take pinning and put him over in ram check spot at right tackle which is a little weird when you think about it considering Fuaga is used to playing right tackle and pinning is used to playing left tackle but and then the left guard position is another one that's going to be up for grabs because Andrew Speed is no longer there 
and James Hurst retired. So that's another spot that is going to be up for grabs. It's likely going to come down to either Shane Lemieux or Nick Saldaveri. Nick Saldaveri, a guy that the Saints drafted last year in the fourth round, who I know they have high hopes for. And, you know, hopefully he spent this past offseason, you know, working on this craft and, you know, um, developing because he is a guy that coming out of college did have potential but was pretty raw. But it looks like he is going to get a chance to start at that left guard position. Then, of course, that center, Eric McCoy, and right guard, Cesar Ruiz. And then I talked about it earlier, Trevor Penning is probably going to be at right tackle. Um, I'm not really sure how I feel about it. I feel like maybe you should keep guys where they're comfortable or used to, but you know, whatever it is, what it is, this is obviously going to be Trevor Penning's last chance. I didn't think he deserved to be benched last year. I think he should have been kept in and allowed to develop, especially after missing his entire rookie year and off season. But I've talked about that plenty in the past. It looks like that's what the offensive line is going to look like. But, you know, who knows? By the end of training camp and to the start of the season, it could look completely different and guys could be shaking up all over the place. But nonetheless, I'm excited to see what the offensive line is looking like in training camp and, so, and see how some of them battles are going. Next thing I'm excited to watch is the linebacker battle, particularly between Pete Werner and Willie Gay Jr. The Saints, of course, signed Willie Gay Jr. this offseason from the Kansas City Chiefs. He's a really athletic linebacker who can cover in space. Super Bowl champion, has tons of playing experience, but it sounds like he wasn't really happy with his opportunity on the Chiefs here lately. Um, didn't get a whole lot of playing time last year, but you know that could change with the Saints. He comes over and he gets a chance to compete with Pete Werner you know, right away to be on the field the majority of the time next to, to Mario Davis. Um, you know, we lost Zach Bond to the Philadelphia Eagles, so that's an immediate upgrade there if you ask me in terms of pure linebacker play at least. Now Pete Werner is a guy who has showed flashes of great linebacker play, but last year was a down year for him. But if he can bounce back and get back to form, it should be a tough, you know, close competition for that starting spot next to DeMario between him and Willie Gay Jr. And last year on my list, but certainly not least, I want to see how the secondary plays out. After all the drama, well, not really drama with Marshawn Lattimore, but all the trade rumors, it looks like he is going to be on the New Orleans Saints roster this year. Of course, that could still change. Who knows? But obviously, it's going to be Lattimore and Paulson Adebo starting outside corners. Paulson Adebo coming off a great year uh, last year, which was really nice to see, especially after he kind of struggled the year before. But Paulson Adebo was awesome last year. And then Elante Taylor, who played in the nickel last year, He's probably going to be the nickel corner again, the slot corner again. You know, Dennis Allen spoke how, you know, it, that's a tough position to play. It's totally different than playing outside. And, you know, Dennis Allen said that he has um, confidence that Elante Taylor is going to be even better in year two. He was, he was kind of rough, you know, a rough go at it in year one for him or year one for playing nickel, that is. Um, but again, like Dennis Allen says, it's a whole different position and it just takes reps. So hopefully going into Alante's year three of his career, but year two playing slot corner, that he's gotten even better. And then of course they drafted Kool-Aid McKinstry. Who knows how he fits in? Big man-to-man -man coverage corner. Um, fits right in with what Dennis Allen likes to do, play man-to-man. -man. I think he'll get plenty of playing time because, you know, secondary is one of the positions that somebody always ends up starting, you know, due to injury or whatever reason. And then also sec uh, the safety play. No more Marcus May. Jordan Howden's going to be the guy for the job unless, you know, the Saints sign Justin Simmons. Saints, please sign Justin Simmons if you're watching this. Um, uh, Jordan Howden, though, looked good in his rookie year. Got a lot more playing time than probably expected and looked really solid, um, you know, out there playing next to the Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew. So I'm excited to watch him continue to develop as well because I think he can also be a really solid um, safety. But that is just a short list of things off the top of my head, really, that I'm excited to watch. Obviously not the only things, but I'm just excited for football. I know you guys are too. Appreciate you guys watching. Peace.